While we mostly provide pumping support, I am often reminded of how difficult it is to balance a lot of aspects of motherhood and career as a working mom. While I am a pumping expert, I'm also a working mom. I've been where you are with little ones. I'm still where you are at <laughs> little ones. In fact, I got to go pick them up from school very soon here. I'm still in the thick of it with you. So whether you have a new baby or you're expecting one, or you're just right in the messy middle, know that I'm here for you and I want to help. So today in this video, we're going to be talking about some of the most common advice that I'm seeing online for balancing career and motherhood. Let's have some real talk about it and let's have some chats in the comments too. If you found things that have worked well for you or for others, please share them. If you have questions, let us know. Also, if you are a breastfeeding, pumping, working mom, please subscribe to the channel. We have new videos every week. Again, a lot on pumping support, but there's a lot that goes beyond the pump and that's what we're focusing on in this video. So let's look at some lists here and see what they say and what we think about them. So this first one here is from The Muse. I don't really know who that is, but they had some good advice. Eight tips for going back to work after baby from a parent who's been there. First one was be patient with yourself. I think 100% we need to do that. <laughs> Build trust in your child care. Now, this is a huge one. Not only trusting in your child care, but setting them up for success. And especially for pumping moms, which is who I usually work with, is we if the bottle feeding part is huge. If you are feeding at the breast and bottle feeding, it's even more important because they can really set you back and make you have to pump more than your baby's actually needing because of the way that they're feeding. So not only do you have to have trust in your childcare so you can have peace of mind at work and so you can do your job effectively, but we also have to train and help them help you, especially from a pumping sense. I think that's great advice on here. Three, set clear boundaries with your team and yourself. Oh, I love this advice because this is something that I've talked about before, especially when you go back to work. Setting very clear boundaries from day one is so important, which is why I love it when moms come and join our program on maternity leave, because we can tackle so many problems before they're even problems, not only with back to work stuff, but with milk supply, with pumping, everything. So maternity leave is my favorite place to get moms, but Sometimes they wanna go back to work and try it themselves and see if it works, which I totally get and respect too. So we also do get a lot of moms that are back to work, especially in the first few weeks when things start to kind of go down. <laughs> we have some other videos on the channel about that. I'll put one up top in the description for you, but setting clear boundaries with your team and yourself is huge. Four, advocate for your needs and your child's. Unfortunately, this is part of being a working mom. Um, some have to do it more than others. And I'm actually finding that especially a lot of the women that come and work with me, you know, career driven women who are, you know, successful in what they're doing, who enjoy their jobs. Um, not that you have to, but they tend to have to fight a little bit less because they just, they've been around the block for a minute, you know, but you may have to actually ask for what you need and make sure that you get it. Number five, managing expectations. Huge. I don't think you know how those big, those two words really are. And again, that's a lot of what I do when I'm helping work with moms is we got to figure out what is realistic for you. What's realistic for a milk supply. What's realistic for a breast pump to do. And then we can hit these goals, you know? And so managing expectations is huge. And I wish we had time to really dive into that, but excellent advice. Schedule time to pump is number six. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense to me. Again, a whole nother video. We've got some on the channel. Uh, yeah, you need to do that. Seven, find your support team. Again, huge. Not only the people that are directly in your life, you know, a partner, another caregiver, people in your home, that's important. Friends, especially a community of people that have done this before. I actually hear this often from, from women that I talk to is that their friends are kind of just on a different page. Or if you're a working mom or planning to go back to work after maternity leave, and your friends are stay-at-home moms, your experiences look totally different. So finding a community, a support community of other moms who are doing similar things to what you're doing is incredibly huge. I would also include on a support team experts and you know lactation consultants, things, people that can help you answer your questions, troubleshoot your problems, things like that. Number eight on this list is make time for you, just you. Probably easier said than done, but excellent advice nonetheless. Let's look at another one and see if they had similar suggestions. Okay, how to balance your life as a working mom. Perfect, only eight steps, we can do it. <laughs> Number one, find life balance as a working mom. 
I think there was more to that that I don't have here because that doesn't make a lot of sense. That's what we're trying to do. Number two, consider the season you're in. This is great advice. It's also really hard to see when you're in the moment. <laughs> this time in your life where you have a young baby, where you're working, where so a lot of your work time is devoted to pumping, it's just a lot to manage. You're washing bottles at home. You're also taking care of a baby. You're trying to make time for a partner, whatever. It's a lot, but it is a short time, but it feels in the moment like you're going to be there forever. Like this new normal is just hard. And I totally get that. And my youngest is three now. So we're kind of moving into the next phase. So I can tell you from experience that it doesn't last forever. But I also know that in the moment, it just feels like this is undoable. Ugh. So if you can find a way to consider the season you're in, it is good advice. Number three, give yourself grace. Huge, 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 huge. You're not perfect and you're never going to be perfect. You're not going to be a perfect mother. You're not going to have a perfect milk supply. You're not going to make everything right. And you can't fix everybody's problems. So just come to terms with that. Give yourself some grace and know that you're doing the best that you can and be okay with that. Again, much easier said than done, but great advice. Four, prioritize your spouse if you're married or involved. This is important. I think it's it's really easy to lose to kind of put your partners on the back burners for one, because they're adults and they can take care of themselves. So they're like the most logical ones to, to kind of be last, you know, if you're involved with them long-term, they're also probably not going anywhere. So they're just like the easiest ones to forget. <laughs> I hate to say that, but you have a lot of other stuff going on. So just have a moment with your partner. If you have one, if you don't have one, you don't have to worry about that, but it is actually good advice from a mom of three. It gets easier every time and you grow together and you learn together. But anytime you can say thank you to your spouse or give them a private moment is going to help your relationship in the long run. I'm not a counselor. I'm a, lactation. I'm a breastfeeding expert. So, <laughs> you know, whatever. Number five, don't try to do it all. We kind of talked about that already. Excellent advice. Six, let go of the mom guilt. Again, excellent advice. Easier said than done. In fact, I actually just read a book recently that happens to be sitting right here, which I did not plan on talking about, but it was called Work Parent Thrive, and I really enjoyed it. 12 science-backed strategies to ditch guilt, manage overwhelm, and grow connection. That was a very interesting read, and I liked it a lot, so I'm glad I thought of that just now. I'll put a link down below so you don't have to go searching for it. Number seven, wherever you are, be there. This is actually a good piece of advice, especially for working moms, because I know that you have a lot of responsibilities, especially in your career as a mom. It's just a lot. So when it's work time, work. When it's pump time, pump. When it's time to be with your baby, be with your baby. And setting those really clear boundaries, although I know how annoying it is that you have to jump between tasks all day long. You're working, and then you're pumping, and then you're whatever and then you're commuting and then you're making dinner and then you're like you're jumping back and forth work pump work pump work pump i i struggled a little bit with that just kind of being pulled out of the moment so often but wherever you are be there i actually do like that advice and then number eight on this list is make time for rest excellent advice as well a rested mom is a better mom and person overall so when we're balancing milk supply and sleep we got to be a little more, more careful there nighttime is an important part of expressing milk and keeping that milk supply strong. But as soon as we're able to get rid of that, it's, this is my favorite when I can just help moms ditch that night one and still make their goals. It's perfect. Okay. Let's check out one more while we're here together. This one's from what to expect, which it's been around for a while. Let's see what they had to say. These helpful tips will help you establish that delicate and important balance. Okay. Let's see it. Set up a family calendar. Actually, that's a great idea because as a working mom, your life is just full of logistics. And, you know, I think some of the other ones will go into, you know, the mental health side of all of this, but there's a lot of logistics. So setting up a family calendar so that you can divide and conquer is an excellent idea. Two, find good childcare and have a healthy relationship with your caregiver. A thousand percent. We talked about that at the beginning of the video, but I still agree. 
a thousand percent <laughs> because this can make a huge difference. If your caregiver is unwilling to meet your requests or take advice on how you want your baby cared for, especially when it comes to feeding, it can make your pumping job so much harder and just cause so much anxiety and friction in your life and just make everything harder. Who wants to be at work when they're not happy with the childcare that they have? So, you know, find a good nanny, find a good daycare. You know, if you're you know, mother, mother-in-law, sister, aunt, like whatever's watching the baby, make sure that they're on your side. I know it's harder with family too. Inside my program called Pumping for Working Moms, I work with only working moms in there who are pumping, right? And you'd be surprised how many of them have family members watching their babies and they're really struggling getting their, you know, getting the grandma of the baby to feed the baby appropriately because they were from a different generation when everyone was formula fed and you just like shoved it down and moved on with your life. But we can't do that with breast milk. It's just not the same. So it, it gets tricky. I, I feel you there. Three, divide and conquer. This is a great one too. Kind of goes back to the first one on this list of setting up a family calendar. You don't have to do everything by yourself. And in relation to pumping, this is an easy divide and conquer. You're making milk, you're pumping the milk, have a partner or a caregiver or whoever is there to help you, nanny, whatever, do the stuff that they can do, which is washing bottles and parts, prepping and storing the milk for the next day or in the freezer or whatever, getting your pumping bag all packed and ready for you tomorrow, making sure that you have a meal and water when you sit down to pump, helping you stick to your pumping schedule, giving you motivation to do that, being willing to adjust how they think the baby needs to be fed and feeding appropriately and how you know they need to be with a bottle if you're still feeding at the breast too. So divide and conquer as much as possible. You don't get a gold star for doing this by yourself. So don't do it because nobody cares. Like just they're there to help you. <laughs> Have a backup babysitter in place. Excellent idea because you're a working mom. So the more days you have to miss from work, the more stress that is for you. Also could potentially be a lack of income. You're, you're paying for daycare. Like it's just, yeah, have a backup plan. Have a plan. Five, make your mornings as easy as possible. Also another great idea. I find that mornings are a really good time to sneak in an extra pump. Also so is before, right before bed especially for working moms who are just kind of pumping in. If you need to sneak like a little bit of extra milk, that can be great. But making that morning as easy as possible is great. Pack your bag the night before or have a partner do it. Minimizing friction in your life in any place that you're noticing it. A lot of times that can be in the morning. If you start your day frazzled and rushing out the door and like all the stuff, it's a little bit hard to recover from that sometimes. Uh, number six, get the supports you need at work. Excellent advice again sometimes tricky. So if you need some help and support, you know, talking with your boss about your breasts, I get it. It's hard. And we've done that before inside of our program. We even had to help advocate for our clients because they're not getting the support that they want. They're not getting their needs met and their employers are potentially breaking the laws that are set in place for pumping mothers, you know? So if you want some help pumping fast and efficiently, that's what we do too. I know that balancing your career and your baby, your breast milk, your all the things that you're balancing is a lot. And it goes beyond the pump, which is the whole point of this video, right? We're going to keep putting pumping information out into the world. We're going to keep giving free videos on YouTube to help and support and serve you. But if you're looking for more of a step-by-step -step guide and outline and long-term support from myself and my team of experts, we're there just waiting for you. So if you think that that would help you find more balance and less friction in your life, that's exactly why we built it. So you can schedule a call with us by using the link down below, getting on our calendar, because we want to see this easier for you. I just want to let you know, to kind of end this video, that I see you. I talk to working moms every day. I'm a working mom myself. My, I've been doing this for 10 years, <laughs> right? I've been a nurse and a lactation professional for even longer. And I, I see you. I know that pumping is not easy. And I know that there's more to pumping and more to this experience of yours than simply putting on a breast pump and pushing go. It doesn't always work. The mental load is huge. 
And I want to support and help you through that if that's the kind of help and support that you're looking for too. So I'm really excited to talk to you. I'm going to put a video up here that I think you might like next. And there'll be a bunch of free resources down in the description. So make sure you check that out as well. But I wish you the best of luck. I honestly want the best things for you. So good luck and happy pumping.